quick term talk. pH, pKa, pi, pKr. pH, this is a measure of your free proton availability. This is telling you about the solution. It's telling you how many protons are in the solution, but it's an inverse scale, so the more protons there are, the lower that pH is actually going to be. pKa, this is a measure of acid strength. This is talking about a single deprotonatable site. A molecule may have multiple pKa's. Each point at which you have a place that can give and take protons is going to have a pKa. The pKa is going to represent the pH at which there is half of it in the protonated state and half of it in the deprotonated state of that individual acidic site. If we have multiple sites, what happens is that you're going to have some be protonated and some be deprotonated, and you'll get to a point where there's a pH at which you're net neutral. So some groups might be positive, some groups might be um, negative, and you are going to have this situation where your molecule overall is going to be neutral. This is your pi. The pH at which that happens is your pi. pKr. This is just the word for the pKa of an amino acid R group or side chain. And one of the most common places you see the term pI is also in use with proteins. So proteins, we have those 20 main amino acids, and some of them can um, be are ionizable. Some of them can give and take protons. Now, each of these ones that can give and take a proton is going to be, um, it's going to have its own pKa, and we call these pKrs, and you can look and find them in a table, and you'll see that not all of them are going to have them. The ones we most like, we talk about most often are going to be our acidic and our basic ones. Um, we call these ones acidic because in their neutral form, they act as acids, give up that proton, and now they're negatively charged. Um, and in their conjugate base form, and we call these ones the basic amino acids because they are going to be, in their neutral form, they act as bases, they take a proton, and therefore they're going to um, be positively charged. Now you can see that the pKa's of the basic ones are higher than the pKa's of the acidic ones. And this is because, well, if something is a better base, it's going to be a weaker acid and a better acid is going to be have a weaker conjugate base. And so basically what's going to happen is that the lower the pKa, the stronger the acid, the weaker the base. The higher the pKa, the stronger the base, the weaker the acid. And here, we're just, I'm just using the term pKa, and this applies to all of the P, every pKa, but when it's in the context of a protein, we call it a pKr. Now, proteins are going to have a lot of these different side chains that are going to be ionizable. And so what's going to happen is you're going to have a combination of amino acids in the protein that are going to be positive and negatively charged. At some point, at some pH, you're going to have it where they balance out. This, the pH at which this happens is called the pI. The pI tells you about charge, but the pKa does not. It only tells you about protonation. It does not tell you about the charge of the molecule. So remember, a molecule can have multiple sites of those. And yes, every time you add a proton, you're going to be adding a positive charge. But if you were negative to begin with, you might still be negative or you might be neutral. Or if you are neutral, you're going to end up positive. The pI is going to tell you about charge. The pKa is not. The pI comes from the pKa's of all of the different acids that are involved in the molecule, but that is not going to be, um, the pKa is not going to tell you about the charge of the molecule, whereas the pI will. So what does it tell you? So the pI is the point at which you've got that even balance. Um, your protein is on net neutral. So again, this is not saying that all of the groups are pos are like, None of the groups are ionized. In, case, in fact, if the, none of the groups were ionized, your protein probably wouldn't be very soluble. But instead, because the, those groups have different um, pKa values or different pKr values, we can call them, remember? Therefore, your protein is going to have, they're going to deprotonate or protonate at a different, um, at different kind of like extremes and to different extents. And so what's going to happen, there's going to be some pH where you're going to be neutral. That is your elect isoelectric point. We talk about it in, in the terms of in proton proteins, and you can use um, software like PropParam, XPZ PropParam, to actually figure out the PI or the theoretical PI. But that is just that is the point at which you're not neutral for any sort of molecule that is multiprotic. It has lots of sites that can give up a proton. Because remember, every type that can give up a proton will have a pKa. And then any molecule that has multiple of those will have a PI. 
The PI, remember, this is telling you about charge. If you're at a pH, if you're at a pH lower than anything, the lower you go in pH, the more protons there are. The more protons there are, the more likely things are to be protonated than if they were at a higher pH. It's not telling you it's more likely to be protonated than deprotonated, but when you go down in, when, in pH, more protons, more protons available, more things become more likely to be protonated than they were before. At a pH below the molecule's pi. So remember, P, pi is telling you about the molecule level. If you're at a pH below that, you're going to be positive most of the time. Be there's more protons around, more of the sites become protonated, you get the higher, um, the you're going to be net positive. But that's coming from like all of these sites and everything. It's not telling you about like what specific site tip the scale or anything like this. A PKA, this is telling you, basically, remember, this is talking about a single ionizable site. It's saying that site is going to give up a proton. And you're going to find that, or I mean, it's going to take a proton if you're at a lower pH. And so you're more likely to find it protonated. This does not tell you anything about charge. This only tells you about protonation at that individual site. Conversely, at a higher pH, there's going to be fewer protons available. If there are fewer protons available, then the molecules become more likely to give up those protons. Um, they become less likely to have a proton. If they give one up, they can't find one. All these various things. If you're at a higher pH, you're less likely to find those protons. Those protons, remember, that's where the positivity is coming from. But that is happening at these pKa levels, not the pI level. And when we talk about the charge, that's the molecule overall. That's the pI. If you're at a pH that's above the PI, you're going to be negative most of the time. On net, that's the net, the whole molecule. If you're at a pH that's above an acid's pKa, that site is going to be deprotonated the majority of the time. So again, we're talking about site with a pKa versus talking about charge with the PI. Looking at the site, it does not tell us about the actual charge. The molecule is going to, yes, be in a decreased charge than it was before, but it, that we don't know anything about the charge of the molecule in its previous state. PI will tell us about the charge. The PI refers distinctly to the charge, not to any one site. And when you're at the PI, when you're at a pH that's at the PI, now your molecule is going to be net neutral most of the time. And if you are at the P an acid's pKa, the acidic site's going to be protonated half the time and deprotonated half the time. This does not tell you anything about the charge of the overall molecule. So again, pH telling you about the solution, the level of the protons available. And it's, it's an inverse log. So basically, the more protons there are, the lower the pH. The lower the pH, the more likely things are to be protonated. Remember, protons come with positivity. So if you're below a pH below the pI, that's telling you your molecule is going to be positive. If you, however, are at a pH below the pKa, well, all this is telling you is that you're going to be you're, that acidic site is going to be protonated. That does not mean that the site is going to be positively charged. The molecule is part of it's going to be positively charged. We see these terms often in the case of a protein, and we have such a, we have a special name for the pKa of a side chain, and that is our pKr. At the pKr, you're going to have equal amounts protonated and deprotonated of the side chain's um, ionizable group, just like you would have for any other acid, but we give it this special name, this pKr. And this is really helpful because when proteins are going to have a lot of these different side chains. And so then the molecule, the protein overall, we can refer to it having a PI, which is the isoelectric point, which is typically what you're going to go and you're going to estimate um, using your prop param software or whatever. That's what you'll get estimated in order to do things like figure out the overall charge of a protein when you're trying to figure out a purification strategy that is charge based. Because remember, the PI is the point at which you're neutral. Below that, more protons, more of it gets protonated. The protonated outweigh the deprotonated and all that stuff. Your protein becomes positive. At a, at a higher pH, there's fewer protons available. Less of those sites are going to be protonated. You're going to have your um, protein be negative. What this means then is that that's going to inform your purification strategies. Because if your protein is positively charged at the pH of your buffer, you're going to want to use um, negatively charged beads. And if you are going to be purifying a protein that is negatively charged, you're going to want to use positively charged beads. The PI is referring to the isoelectric point, the point at which you have this net neutral. This is not telling you about the individual sites. 
you want the individual sites, you go to the PKA, and the PKA is in terms of, in the terms of a protein is going to be your PKR. Um, if we're not counting the PKAs of the carboxyl ends and the amino terminus and stuff, it's also really important to know that when they link together, their PKAs can change dramatically. Just like a stronger acid is going to have a lower PKA, a more acidic protein is going to have a lower PI. So we talk about an acidic protein versus a basic protein. Typically, the acidic proteins are going to have a lower PI, and the basic proteins are going to have a higher PI. And that comes from the combinations of acidic and basic side chains and how many there are of each and which ones there are and all of this context stuff. But you're going to say that a lower PI is going to be a more acidic protein and a higher PI is going to be a more basic protein. Speaking of acidic proteins, Typically, we're going to find them after a lot of those sites of acid as acids, and so you're going to find it negatively charged. If we talk about an acidic patch on a protein, that's going to be a part of the protein where there's a lot of those acidic residues. So remember, residues just the remainder when those amino acids join together and their side chains stick off, but they've lost their amino and their um, carboxyl groups because those have combined to form the peptide bond. In the residue, you're going to have these acidic residues. Those are going to make it an acidic site. And then you're going to have that colored red often. And then if you were to have a basic site, a basic patch, that would have a lot of those basic residues, those lysines, histidines, arginines, and those would give it a positive charge in that region and be colored blue. And in those positive charge forms, those are the conjugate acid forms of those basic amino acids. Key thing, PI, charge, PKA, individual acidic site. PKR is just the name for the PKA of an amino acid's R group, aka side chain. And pH is telling you at the solution level. And you compare the pH to the PKA or to the PI or to the PKR in order to figure out what state things are.